And there's a cost to every one of these levels, right? Everyone at this level, we, we have bodyguards, everyone at this level will already have people that will see their identity linked to the destruction of that person. So knowing that there's uh, people down here, why would they stay here? Well, it's kind of nice being anonymous. It means that you don't have to be responsible for anything. So there's a, there's a win and lose at every one of these levels. But knowing that by going high, you actually have the ability to leave a legacy. Legend on a map are those symbols where you don't even need to have words anymore, right? Because they're just in there and planted in that map. And the legends in our history are those legends that basically have left behind a mark of the story that they have seen, the composition they've seen for our community. We are living the first time in history that each one of us has the ability to lift up the legend level, that we have the ability to leave behind a composition which will outlive ourselves. And that's really the power uh, that we have if we decide to take it. Now I'm going to give you a moment just to share with the person next to you, so I guess we're going to overview of it without going into all the detail. Uh, just take a moment and share with the person next to you, where do you see yourself in this at the moment for yourself? Uh, and what was the distinction that came up just from the way that I kind of shared these uh, just now? Take a moment and share with the person next to you. battery completely went um, down so I just came into the charger's place sitting right at the back so the reception will not be very clear because I've left my seat from the front side so just you just have to bear if you can pick up anything hope you can pick up something that you really enjoy they were talking about um, the infrared so infrared just reminding us where we are in our own lives in terms of income levels so different people are in different income levels so i've done that bit before so it's always good to know where you are in your life and um and and begin to think about how you transform um the circumstances and uh, add that income level so that you are also able to create um, a better world. So um, that's what they were talking about um, just um, when my battery went out. Um, so yes, I'm back at uh, the charge point. So um, you're listening to Roger Hamilton. Roger Hamilton in town here. And anytime he's in town, I try and enter some of his um, um, programs. Today is... Um, the European Entrepreneur Summit. European Entrepreneur Summit, which is being held from the 7th to the 9th of September 2018. So um, today was about connect, impact, and grow. Connect, impact, and grow. So that's what this is all about, um, the topic here today. Uh, yeah, so... Um, and um, for those people who are following me, just to announce my uh, next program is on the 19th of October, 19th of October, which will be on a Friday, um, inviting you to join us on the 19th of October down at um, Port Colors House. And uh, our host uh, on that day, we've got fabulous host who is... Um, Empress Trisha 
will be the hosts and supporting us throughout with all the media coverage. Um, tomorrow that should be out. So letting you know our next event this year for UK Africa Diaspora Forum is going to be in Parliament at Port Callas House, Wilson Room, 19th of October, 12 p.m. And let's start on time and um, expecting a full house. Yes, I am. Thank you so much for asking. And um, I will be putting an event sprite page by Wednesday, so look out for that. I will be sending it to this so you can all watch. Very interesting. I will come back to you later on that. Just to give you an idea on all of this, because this is about giving you today the overall broad rush about the fact that if you're never stuck in your business, there's always the next step to take, and there's people that really have taken that step. Um, this here gives you an idea of each of these different levels, right? That each one has blocked a very specific number of steps to get out of each level. So these are a recap of what I just shared up here. Every one of them is multiplying your ability to unlock one more zero and multiply by 10. Uh, the results you can get of what is a lot of money and what's not a lot of money to you. So we've got yellow level, we've got green level, blue level. This thing comes back to why? Why do we do all of this kind of stuff, right? Why don't we just go out and build our own businesses without having to go teach other people as well? And that comes right back to the beginning of the day. And it comes back down to this whole idea of the time exam. If these are steps that build your own consciousness, and we can then share these steps. Build your own consciousness. Build your own consciousness. Build your own consciousness. Then we create a new map, a new education plan for people going forward where they really are able to then be part of what is the largest revolution in history. Uh, like there are a number of graphs now that are actually exceeding the graph that you just saw here, uh, which is all about the number of people that are at the point of power within a civilization, within a generation. But we saw that this is going to be all the kind of key points through time when we actually had different people who were the ones that were generating the most value and the most wealth as well. We've just gone through the whole corporate and financial worlds and seen how that has impacted the world um, and after the industrial revolution, um, after the oil companies, and we're now seeing it's a startup down that there's actually economies of speed against economies of scale where any one individual can do more to make an impact on the world than any other company can. And we'll be seeing this every single day we see this. Uh, and this then links to this massive shift that's taken place where when we started the Entrepreneurs Institute, there was only about three, 400 million entrepreneurs in the world. We're going to be at a billion entrepreneurs by the time we get to 2020. Right? This is from the Global Entrepreneur Monitor. Right? They've been tracking these numbers. So a billion people. There weren't even a billion people on the planet in the year 1900, like 100 years ago. Right? So, so this is the largest vocational shift in history. There's never been such a shift towards a particular vocation as in entrepreneurship and what's happening right now. Uh, and we don't have the tools up to now to make it happen. Just like 100 years ago, we didn't have the tools to know how we could fly a plane. But enough people start flying, the skies get busy enough, then, then you end up getting to a point where it's like we've got to go to flight school to figure out how to fly, uh, and then you can know you're going to be able to fly. We're going to do the same thing right now in terms of creating a flight school for entrepreneurs. Here's the number of co-working spaces that are growing right now as well. So we're riding this wave at the moment, supporting as many people who are joining us as possible uh, towards a bigger vision. Uh, and that bigger vision we mapped out several years ago, uh, which was going to be, and this is where you want to be in 30 years time, we said within five years, by 2020, we wanted to see all 79 nations global goals in GDSU. We wrote this before GDSU had 10,000 people on GDSU. Today, GDSU has 850,000. So we've, we've really mapped out the plan of what we wanted to create. Uh, we have our beach clubs, our resorts, which are the home of the movement. We're seeing then within the next 10 years that we want to see this in all of the different schools, which is why we're growing junior school at the moment. Uh, and then within the next 15 years, we see that we're going to be living in a world where potentially we could solve many of these United Nations global goals by working collectively together, bringing together entrepreneurs, investors, organizations uh, to make it happen without waiting for governments or waiting for anyone else to make it happen as well. Um, this all comes back down to the power of zero. Because this zero you can think of as nothing and everything, just as a symbol, or you can realize it really links not just to everything we talk about within the I Ching and the eight different profiles, but to something much bigger than that, uh, which is the world itself. Uh, this is nothing if you look at it from a galactic point of view. 
but he did this everything once. And for the very first time that this image was taken uh, was in 1972. It wasn't that long ago. This was the blue marble, so taken by Apollo 17, which was the first vehicle far enough away from Earth with a camera to take a photo where we saw the Earth before. And it actually launched the guy movement in the 1970s, which was the peace movement, where we all basically started saying, why are we fighting each other? Uh, that was the last time that we had this massive big movement towards peace. And we're going to see the same thing happen again because we've got all of these individuals, these entrepreneurs, going out into space now uh, and sending back photos very similar to this as well. But Mr. Fuller used that inspiration back in the 1970s uh, to actually come up with this whole concept of the world game. Uh, this is what he said. Uh, I was sharing this yesterday with the, uh, with, with the VIPs. I was saying, I was saying he came up with this idea. So I think he said, funny, you come up with this whole like, frightening idea of the final exam. How do we pass the exam? He said, the way we pass the exam is we create a game because humans love to play, they love to have fun, they love to collaborate. We create a game for the world game. We'll solve all the world's problems, right? We'll decrease our consciousness together. And everyone goes, that's a brilliant idea. Uh, what's the whole objective of the game? So he defined it. He says, it's to make the world work for 100% of humanity in as short as possible time through spontaneous cooperation without ecological effects or the disadvantage of anyone. Anyone, that's an awesome game. Let's all play that game. Okay, how do we play it? He goes, okay, I'll tell you how to play it. And then he died. <laughs> that, was, that was a bad ending, right? Yeah, actually, so he died. He's like, oh, they all the age. He died, but he hadn't actually worked out exactly how the game was going to work at that point. And I was so excited as a 20 year old to say, oh, I'm going to play this game. Someone's going to figure it out. Someone's going to play it. And when they start playing it, I'm in, right? Uh, it's been 30 years, and no one was starting the game. Uh, everyone doing different things, but we're all playing the game separately from each other. And it was actually uh, last year when I was sitting with um, some of my friends who we were watching something. Uh, I'm listening to this, and it's saying something. To make their conversations the around the future of the internet, where they're all sitting around, they're part of Facebook. You know, Facebook was still at that point, just in the shortest possible time, through like spontaneous cooperation, without ecological offense or the disadvantage of anyone. That was said by book Mr. Fuller. So please, let's read about the person, and I will be looking into that. Thank you, Juliet McAfee. Facebook was just basically a wall in those days. Um, and it's like, yeah, we're going to have this, and someone's going to go do that, and it's going to be awesome when they do it, and we're all going to go join it. And then they waited for a few years, and no one was doing it. And eventually they're like, wait, why is no one else doing this? And it's like, well, because no one else has got this network, which has connected everyone together in a way that actually is getting them collaborating already. We do. So maybe not everyone else is having the same conversation. Maybe we're the one we're waiting for. We're the one that's meant to be doing this. And that was when they, they clicked. He actually did that when um, uh, he had a offer to buy Facebook. And the first thing he told me was Steve Jobs. Uh, everyone needs a mentor. And he had Steve Jobs as a mentor. And he said, Steve, what should I do? And Steve Jobs was like, well, you should do what I did. Go to India for, for six years. Yeah, I go six years. I'll go for six months. So Mark Zuckerberg went out there and really thought, why am I here? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And came back with vision that what would a world look like if it was all connected, if we were a community that transcended government. Uh, and then he came back to the office and said, I'm, I'm going to do this myself. And that's how Facebook became so big and became what it is today. Uh, and that same thing, when I read that story, I was like, oh, well, here we are talking about playing the world game. Uh, we're waiting for someone else to create it. And we've already got the largest network around the world of entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs that want to make a difference. Why are we waiting for people to play this game? So we started playing this game. We actually started creating it this year. Uh, the world game started on June the 10th. It's going on to December the 10th. This is just round one. We've got 12 rounds up to 2030, which is the, 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 the date set for the, um, for the global goals that will be achieved. So we've got 12 times to figure out how to do this right. Uh, we set ourselves goals, which is that we wanted to have 70,000 entrepreneurs in 70 cities playing in the first year. We want to get to 10 million impacts. 10th of December 2018 happens to be the 70th anniversary of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. There's only been one generation that would actually even recognize themselves as one global humanity. Uh, and this is going to be a big day. We already have connected up the United Nations. Uh, we're already now part of the United Nations as an organization now as well. We're part of the United Nations Global Compact. Uh, we're presenting to the United Nations what we're doing right now as well. They're really excited about what we're doing because so they don't have a lot of other entrepreneur networks that are doing what we're doing and aligning in the way we're aligning. We're tracking what our income impact. I'm recommending you all join the World Game. It's free to join. Uh, and straight after this event, you can all be part of this as well. Uh, and we're tracking everything using uh, B1G1. Uh, this is Port Dunn's organization. Uh, this is where you have the opportunity to be able to connect to courses all around the world. Uh, we have got them linked all to the 18 or 17 different uh, global goals. 
Uh, this is an example. This, I, I posted this yesterday. This is already where we're at as a play. We've got 442,000 giving impacts. Uh, these are the different cities. So every city here has got a city leader. They've got people that are running the cities. They've got events every single month. You can see London in there. London currently is number five. So at the moment, Stockholm, Melbourne, Auckland, and Durban are ahead of London. Uh, but that can easily be changed with the number of you jumping in here and being part of the game. Uh, everyone then actually contributes in some way to your company towards whatever is your big cause, and then that all gets tracked here as well. Uh, strangely enough, Tunbridge Wells is number six. Not too far behind London. So we have a very active Tunbridge Wells community. They're beating Sydney, Copenhagen, and then we've got Manchester, we've got Prague. So this is happening all around the world at the moment. Uh, in fact, because over today and tomorrow, the last part of this is connecting to people as well, um, can I see a show of hands of who we have here who are uh, city leaders, or any city leaders within our organization? Um, could you stand up for a moment so we can see who we have here? Uh, and uh, can we give them a round of applause for us today? share your name and which city you're currently leading, so it won't be an idea of who we have already in the room here. All right. So, uh, Jerry, you want to kick it off then? Yeah, I'm Jerry Murray from uh, Glasgow, and I'm in the Glasgow Entrepreneur Social. So, All right, so if you're interested in connecting with anyone in Glasgow, then Jerry is your person to be doing that. All right, let's pass, pass my phone around our box, so we'll get everyone out of the show as well. Thank you. Hi, Jerry. Um, I'm Gloria Austin, London, but I couldn't do this without my team, so Anything that I'm doing in London is 100% behind them, so I should say so thank you to my team in particular. You've got um, Facebook, if you'd like to join us. Oh, Facebook. Perfect. Very um, good. And so, so like, yeah, perfect. Um, so, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's really great. That's really great. Okay. Yeah. Hi, this is Jan. I'm, I'm the heading up of Prague. And we have a couple of people from Prague. So, we're here in Prague. Quite a few guys. Yeah. That's awesome. So following from Prague. All right. So Prague, we ran an event in Prague, and it's incredible what's happening out there. In fact, all of Eastern Europe and Central Europe, there's incredible things taking place there. So we'll continue. Hi, I'm Catherine Gallagher from the mighty Tunbridge Wells. <laughs>
do all of that. Also, through Genius News, you have all our support, and I would love to bring more city leaders on board. We just brought on, we have like eight or nine in America now, and that's like the first group of American city leaders to be on board. So I'm excited to sort of like bring this more all over the place. The UK is our biggest, biggest country for city leaders. So come on board, come find me, uh, and we can chat about whether or not you're going to be bringing socials in your city. The great thing about being a city leader is because we're now also with our entrepreneurial resource side starting up uh, city hubs, which are like co-working spaces, but they're using all of these tools to then give you mentorship and give you the community uh, so it's more than uh, a co-working space. And you're not paying for the space because the cafe makes money and the events make money, so you don't have to pay for the space. It's just a free club for entrepreneurs to show up in. These are now launching, the first one's launching London, we're going to be launching in other parts of, uh, of, uh, of the UK and around the world as well. And the city leaders will be the first ones to be speaking about doing that and as a city leader you then become part of this whole community where you get connected to other cities around the world we have about 70 at the moment we have about 100 by the end of this year and probably more like two or three hundred cities by the end of next year so we're very excited about the fact that we've actually built this amazing community of entrepreneurs all around the world uh, so Kathleen is your go-to person on that if you notice that her surname is the same as mine that's more than a coincidence she is my daughter uh, so, <laughs> so can we give our city leaders and Kathleen a big round of applause for
uh, you can be explaining the whole step by how he does that, how he moves those same steps that he learns as well. Uh, we're now uh, uh, in the 20,000 cities around the world. Uh, we've tackled this in real time. Uh, everything's then linked also in with the purpose test. Um, and we are going to uh, be having an opportunity for those who actually say, well, I'd like to get more involved uh, with the Union School. We're going to have a session tomorrow morning, an 8 o'clock session, so it's happening early in the morning. I'll give you a bit on more on that schedule in a minute. Uh, but also anyone who would like to be a partner with us to have grow this. Uh, we're at the same point that Amazon was after year three, uh, where they started just working with partnerships and actually having training companies, mentoring companies, coaching companies coming and stepping in and working with it. You heard Janet is doing that with the passion test. So we're actually bringing on their certification program, having her trainers that can then actually monitor their activities through that as well. And that's going to be Michelle that you can connect up with if you're interested in finding out more about Genius U. There is Michelle there. Can we give Michelle a round of applause?
from 4.40 to about 5.30. Uh, and for those who are at risk, I'm going to be on the at 5.30 as well. So it's a full pack day tomorrow, but it's all about action. What's the most important thing is thinking that I have to do things I want to achieve, raise some everything we went through today, and we still have these five ways to come. So if you look at all of those, Uh, and we'll be in here for about 20 minutes during the break. 
Uh, and then for everyone else, enjoy the break now. It's just on uh, 3.25, so we can be back in here at about 5 after the right. Yes, um, I hope... Um, thank you so much. Um, let me grab this lady. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? That was really an inspiring story that you gave us. Thank you, Thank you so Thank you much. Sweet. It was very lovely. I'm live on Facebook. Is it okay to quickly interview you? Um, okay, this is um, just uh, um, move a little bit behind. Thank you. Right, I've got Sarah. Because Sarah Taylor and earlier on we were shown a very nice video of her personal story. Now that was really emotional to me and it just um, brought in the essence of health and um, training. But let her speak again a quick summary about herself. Just capturing her here. She's on the platinum card. What brings you here Sarah today? Um, That's okay, that's okay. I was going to a break. Mm -hmm. I was meant to apply for a job on stage back in 2015. Um, and I told my story, which is very quickly, um, when I was 40, I was, I was classified as a beast. Now, I've always identified myself as being a fit person. So, being fit and healthy is always part of my life. But at 40, I found out that I was a beast. And this was, um, cut me very, very deeply. I was deeply ashamed, guilty, and angry at myself for having let myself get that far. So I decided that if I didn't have my health, I had nothing. And I made health and fitness my number one non-negotiable uh, value in life. And I changed my whole lifestyle to align with that value. I never went on a diet, but I lost 25 kilos. Mm -hmm. And then I went through depression, I kept the weight off because I changed my lifestyle to align with healthy habits. And from there I went to bodybuilding. And at the age of 11 world I saw all those 11 world titles, and yeah. World Fantastic, and thank you so much for inspiring us, all of us here, over probably 600. Your phone number, write it down here. I want to follow your story. If you write it there for me, please. Thank you, and I'm Juliet Macapilla. I will send you this video, captured it for you as well. Um, my advice to everybody is it's never too late to start it's never too late from to start sarah taylor live here in london it's never too late to to start i will be talking to her i'll take a photo when i grab those moments follow me at jnm 1000 at jnm 1000 this is why i come to these kind of places it renews me it rejuvenates me it reinvests me it makes me feel hot and I tell you what, I give it all back to the community. Thank you so much to everyone who is watching. Sarah, thank you for stopping. I really You're needed welcome. to. I tried to see you there, but you were talking to someone. And I really wanted to speak to you. Yes. But thank you so much. I've just started exercise. I was, I've put on a little bit of weight, but I'm going to definitely lose. So it's never too late to start. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna go and have my cup of tea and I've grabbed Sarah's number. I where 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 is this um from? It's, it's an Australian. Australia, number. okay. Yes. Oh wow, well done. Thank you for coming all the way from the Australia. I'll contact you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. I'm going to go to my break and leave my phone charging and here today um, is um, okay all right we've been told to take the I'm gonna leave you and love you. See you later. Speak soon.
I'll speak to you all later because I really got to go and have my cup of tea and I'll come back later. Let me charge my phone. And um, this session is just to see those people who are interested to really follow um, this course of uh, entrepreneurial masterpiece. So speak soon, Juliet Macapilla. Follow me at JNM1000.